back to my channel. I'm Judy and I am the running so and so. And first of all, thank you so much for all the lovely comments on seeing me back on YouTube um, after my zips video. It, that was a very traumatic thing to do, but I've done it. But I am coming to you with some bits and pieces. Now, how often do we put things away and forget we've got them? Well, I moved into my lovely house nearly six years ago. And in that time, I have had a lot of things stored away in my garage. And today, my daughter and I were putting things away and taking things out, and we found these boxes marked sewing, so I've come in with them. First thing I've found are my quilt patterns. Now, many years ago, I went on a course with a lovely lady called Dorothy Osler, and, and she wrote a book called a Hist uh, Traditional British Quilts, and it's a history, and she did a lot of work with Beamish Museum. And I did actually make a quilt. So to do your whole cloth quilt, you had to draw out everything, and this was my drawing, and it was done on um, wallpaper paper. I've got an even better idea. I'm going to pause you, I'm going to go and get So here I am, back with the quilt. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to fold it over so you can see a quarter of the quilt, just as you can see it on this drawing. And what Dorothy advised us to do was to draw up a quarter of our quilt. So here is, and it literally is, to scale. So you can see at the front here I've got my heart design, and there is my heart design. And I think, yes, I may have drawn slightly more of my design so that I knew what I was doing. So here it is. So this was the heart design that was, I think, taken from a North Country quilt. And these little swirls, if my memory serves me right, were more Welsh influenced. And I need a little bit of Welsh influence in my life because of course I'm from, my family is from Wales. This was my cable here. And then I decided I would do a running stitch and a feather through my cable. And you can see what I decided to do when I came to quilt. I did do the running stitch through it, but I decided not to feather the cable because I thought it would be too much. Here, which is just next to the centre before the cable, I have done a half crescent moon with, and my original design was to have a fan. As you can see here, there was the original design, was to have a, ooh, where are we? A fan here, but I actually went for just a little rose. And then I had my cups, and then at the end I had tulips with a flower in the corner and from this drawing I made the templates to make the quilt. So it's quite interesting to find all this but in here I've got my first mock-up when I did it to just as a, as a, a, a small template and then I have got the patterns. These are the patterns that I used to make my quilts. I've got tracings and I've got everything I did from this particular course. Oh my gosh, I found something else in here in this folder. I don't know if I've ever told you, but we lived in Canada when I was younger and my parents bought me these and they were on my bedroom wall when I was a child. Indian, Indian prints or should I say Native Americans as they are, Native Canadians. Um, and then here on the other side of this, oh, I've got some template plastic here that's not been used. This has just been in my garage. It was in my house for a long time, excuse my arm. So I've got template plastic here and then just more quilt designs here, quilt basics. That's going back a long time. Quilt basics, that was Margaret. I'm sure it was Margaret. That's a catalogue, that's how catalogues used to come in the day. Look at this, you used to have to get everything. You used to ring up and say, this is what I'd like. No mobile phones on the back there, that would have been a fax number. And then on the other side here, I think I've got a book on quilts here. Oh no, I've got a sketch pad and a quilt pack of designs which I've got from Tyne and Weir Muse Museum Services which I helped to get my designs from here. I found a box of fabric stuffs. So first of all was my little Inuit that my parents bought me from Canada. And then a box of wool that I bought years and years and years ago. Really lovely um, 
Oh, it's so soft. I have no idea what I'm going to make with that. But I've had it years. It's 100% pure alpaca wool. And it's in 50 gram balls. And I've got, I've got 11. I've got 10. So if anybody knows what I could make with 500 grams of alpaca wool, let me know. That would be great. And I have got tulle. I have no idea why I have lovely grey tulle in here. No idea at all. But that is a very soft tulle. It's not net. It's too, it's too soft for net. I have a small scrap of Marimekko fabric. For those of you that don't know Marimekko, she's a Finnish designer and she's very renowned for and famous for doing these lovely large flowers and this will have been this is a dressmaking scrap that i got and i think i'll have probably pick that up in the marimekko shop in oslo i'll go to oslo quite a bit oh and i've got this now i have no idea where this came from and i might need to do a little burn test on that and see how it reacts because i wouldn't be surprised if that is pure silk as to what the content of this beautiful fibre is, I'm not 100% certain because when I've done the burn test, I've used a great big chunk and it has melted back, so I would say it's a bit like plastic. But another thing I've read, it says that if, you, if it only burns when the flame is touching the fabric, it could be silk. But whatever it is, it's beautiful and it is incredibly soft. Um, we can, I mean, the scrunch check test, it does leave, should fall out if it's pure silk but it has left a slight mark. So it may have some silk in it, but I think it's probably a mixture. Whatever it is, it's beautiful. So it's going back into the stash. Well, the next thing I've got here is a piece of lining. So I must have bought this to make. Aha, uh -huh. oh, it could even have been a dress for me. It could have been a dress for my daughter. I think it might have been one we were going to use as a prom dress. But we've got some here and we've actually got it all cut out and I think we've used a polyester taffeta for it and it is just here so I think it's time to think about perhaps finishing this for Hannah which is a good idea so there's that one there and that's obviously on a lovely vintage Vogue and we are going back a very long time oh we've got some nice stabilizer here oh yes the music note fabric for the sun and here I've got some utterly wonderful fabric, which I've known I've had for a very long time. I mean, look at this. Is this not just beautiful? Now, I don't know if you can see it properly. So it looks as if it's on a tie-dye background or a random dyed, but it's got these beautiful flowers on it. Now, many years ago, there was a shop in York called, I think it was called the Cloth Shop, the Cloth House. It was on Castlegate, if anybody's from York and it is just beautiful and I don't I was going to make a top with it and then for some reason I didn't and I have no idea why so I think this is another one that needs to be out of the garage and into the stash and put away properly and underneath that I've got a lovely nice piece of white cotton of some description that can go through but the really nice surprise in here is I found my beads my beads and trimmings Look at this. How many of us get excited when we find our beads and trimmings? Loads and loads of seed beads in here that I could use for things. And elastic. Now, I don't know how you all store your elastic, but I many years ago worked for the cookery department up at the local girls boarding school and we used to get things. Well, this had mini marshmallows in it many years ago and now I've got all my little nice bits of elastic and thing are all nicely stored in there I'm going to have to find homes for all of these oh look and another one and oh now this is silk because this was bought for Stuart's um stole that I made many many years ago oh it's really been quite a little treasure trove I'm going to leave this here while I'm talking to you because this is just utterly utterly the most delightful fabric I really really gonna have to have a thing. I shall, I shall show it to Rachel and uh, I don't know if she's still at home. I know she's nipping out this afternoon. Um, and also I've got another bag here of bits and pieces. Now this bag, this fabric here um, has got, this is wool and silk. I know it is. 
Al Inspiration. That is a Chanel fabric, and it will have come from Linton's Tweeds. Uh, because she bought her fabrics through one of her many dalliances in life, and she she was introduced to the guy that at knew that owned Linton Tweeds. I've got some vintage things here. Look at this. I like a, I like a little bit of embroidery too. So look at this practical hardanger, and this is a newsletter. Weldon's practical needlework. I don't know. Hopefully this is coming out for you. Hopefully it is. Well, and I'll have bought it at one of the shows because I love buying vintage things like that. But it shouldn't be in the garage. On practical hardanger, I love a little bit of hardanger embroidery. I think it's one of the most beautiful embroideries that you can do. And another one here. And these will have been bought at one of those second-hand bookshops uh, at one of the quilting shows. I also know I have another old book here. And what's this? This is just a little bit of Norwegian embroidery in here. I don't quite know what will have been in here. This is something from my Norwegian friend. Oh, yes. She sent me over. A bookmark to do that she's, that she's seen with a traditional Norwegian design and she sent me all the all the wolves which I've had for many a year it's just been put away and it's just been left these things will have come when I lost David and I didn't do anything for absolutely ages you see in here I've got no idea what half of these things are I hope you can see this is a little bit of traditional rose painting um, work to make into a tablecloth and I would have bought this in Norway and over the years this is what I've done pull the frame off and I think the time has come to say that this beautiful work needs to come out and to be worked at it is absolutely gorgeous this is turning into an embroidery and quilting as well as dressmaking vlog today I think that that might have to go I might need a bag to put that in I shall tidy it all up in a minute and look, oh, that thread goes with that one. And I've got another book. This is called Embroidery and Lace. And again, it's come from one of the fairs. And it's signed for the lady and it's 1900. Um, I just love things like this. I love the history and why things are done in a certain way. I've got some silk embroidery that I bought from Pearsall Silk. And it's things that I've done quite a bit of. And I can't believe that my eyes actually let me do that. I'll have bought this at, again, one of the quilt fairs. So that's the finished design, and that's as far as I've gone. And I think for this underneath, the design is underneath. Oh, let me take that out. There we go. Oh, and that's... This is why you never leave needles, because if you leave a needle in your work and you walk away from it, for as long as I've walked away from this from, the needle will go rusty and it will leave a mark in your work. Needle out. So winding this back, it's a two layer thing and you can see the design underneath. And again, I think this is another beautiful little thing that I need to get to one side and I need to finish it. I started a quilt, some, oh no, I don't think I've got to the quilt yet. I don't know what I'm doing here. I haven't got a clue what I found here. Look at this, found all of this. And I don't, honestly, don't know what I was doing. Prairie points, those of you that quilt, how many of you have done prairie points to make these beautiful flowers? And prairie points here, and I've gone round and round in circles making a design with prairie points and I have no idea these will all have been done in the time before David died. I've got hundreds of prairie points in here so yet again I think we'll find a spot for this. David credit card receipt here for when I was Pen Halligans, yes that was in the outlet. I've got, oh, I've got more prairie points here in this box. I've got some lace from my wedding dress don't know why I've got that in there. Bits from the quilt that I want to make um, that I started ages and ages ago and the quilt is around somewhere. I won't show you that until I find the quilt. And Ingeborg has sent me, for my love of hardanger, something out of a Norwegian magazine. 
I don't need to worry if it's in Norwegian, I just send it back and she'll translate it. I've got fabric for Hardanger. Oh, fancy thread, look at that. And bits of Hardanger that I've started. So in my garage, I have found this beautiful treasure chest of goodies. And I'm now going to have to find a place to put them all. But I will do. I'm going to go and hide them all away in my stash. This was made by my grandmother, my father's mum, during the Second World War. And it is a cut work tablecloth. And she gave it to me. And is still usable. It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. I hope you can see it there. It's absolutely stunning. But I've also got something else out here. Which I will have made when I was about eight. See my maiden name here. I hated my maiden name. But it's a little bag that we all made in school. I think we were eight or nine when we did these. Lovely embroidered bags on a bit of binker. And inside here is my brownie uniform. So this is from me from when I was a brownie. I don't know how many of you were brownies. Brownies of the 1960s. Look at this. So there we go, look at that. There we go, my brownie uniform. Yes, and I did. I'm sure I've got, I've got my knitting badge. Some of the badges were taken off. And you know, the one badge I probably didn't get was my sewing badge. I've got my music badge. I've got two music badges. Oh, there it is. There's the sewing badge.